what's going on guys welcome back to another episode of dang and ropa last we left you off i was struggling hardcore with you know the lovely thing called hero and his great contradictions and trying to contradict literally a hero statement which you think would be super easy but hero is literally so dumb that i can't circle around him does that make me dumber than hero Probably, especially at this time of night, but it's fine. We're gonna figure this out. We gotta give it another shot because we literally to died. Um, I refuse to give up to Makoto. Look at my like 18 bars of health. One, I was, I'm gonna move my webcam, I think, down to the bottom corner. No, that's a bad idea. I was gonna have you guys see how much health I have. There you go. I'm gonna stay in this position a lot, so I, this is probably fine. Now I have the crime scene. Body. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty! I... It's because that side was protected from the water! Uh... Dirty! Of course it didn't get dirty! No, that's wrong! How did... Okay. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Right. Maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? What? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim. You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. They got the blood from right in the garden. This much, that's this must, which must mean. The chicken coop chickens. No, they murdered a chicken. No. No, the poor chicken. I'm actually so sad about the chicken. When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So, we're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree. That certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. 
be covered in beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off, but the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off, at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But, to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina. After you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Then suspicion falls back on me again. But why? Why is Kyoko trying to entrap me? I don't understand. <clears throat> Disguised dead bodies been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. It looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No, not that. I just remembered something super serious. Well, don't just stand there. Out with it. You know that knife we found all black and burnt? It's one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remembered. Listen, more important. <clears throat> now that you have the knife, what are we going to do with it? We can't let Kotoko keep it, that's for sure. We don't know what she might do. I don't want it anyway. Hmm. So what to do? Why don't we why don't you hang on to it, Makoto? Huh? Me? don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I did it. It's just... I couldn't be sure of what actually happened last night. I thought maybe I really did kill her. Suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced you did it. Well, thousand percent convinced. Considering everything up till now, I should be able to make it clear. I have to prove I didn't murder anyone. I'm not the killer. There's six people left. It makes it a lot more difficult. Huh. The knife we found lodged in the dead body. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have that knife before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her, right? So there's no question. You took that knife of yours and killed her with it. What a horrible man you are, Makoto. Stab is what killed her, right? 
getting stabbed is the only thing that we can contradict, really. Like, because Toko giving it to Makoto, or uh, Toko saying giving it to Makoto, that we can't contradict that. That's actually what happened. Well, getting stabbed is what killed her, right? No, okay. That automatically well, getting stabbed is what killed her. No, that's wrong. Our very new truth bullet, okay. Stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. It's the explosion. From the description of the cover up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her. No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood stained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine. So what? So. When we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and once to cover it up. The victim was stabbed twice in the same spot? No way that's possible. Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. That's what I remembered. Oh, yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. Then the knife was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but... What's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion. I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her or we won't make any headway on this. The only there's only one explanation I can think of for the explosion. I got it. After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural, because, of course, we saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. Oh, then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Byakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. To determine what ultimately killed the victim, I need to concentrate.
body monochemical file exploded body analysis. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. I guess. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. That's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. Shoot! For countless wounds across her entire body. Shoot! To be determined, correct? Evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. I think I literally just tried that same line of thinking too. Shoot! I'm too focused on hero. Had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Huh. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? And then there's only one other. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the mon. That's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. Shoot. That showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. No. For once, Hero's actually the one that gets <laughs> the Hero's the one that is get brings up the repeatable point. Okay, good job, Hero. Because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it. The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. But yeah. Huh. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. But then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. That's oh, true. I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely. Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. No thanks. I bet you just hit me with the metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground and, and spit on it. <laughs> I feel the same way. Looks like we're on the same page this time. Seriously? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master. So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? The real murder weapon. Is this the I feel like this is the only weapon we have. So I'll try it first. I got it. Cool. Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed her. And that something was Sorry, I'm trying to like. Indeed, there's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds kind of weird. Hey, how dare you back talk, Master? You have no right. I'm not back talking anything. I'm just saying what I think. I don't blame Hina for downing it because there was more than one, th or there was one, more than one thing about that weapon. One more secret. The 
titanium arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thin. Talk me back to Master! You have no right! The Titanium Arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Okay, it's not the fact that it's too thin. Like an arrow would just be too thin. No, that's wrong. You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. One stick is weak, so put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, it's hero, no. That explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker, it was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Well, that's a lie. Oh, no. You absolutely have. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? I literally met her there, literally frame one of chapter five anyway, so... Hmm? Doubly lied. What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. I have evidence. A visit that Kyoko went to the dojo. I got it! The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because... I found it in your room. It was... in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No. It's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. What? She was protecting me. Then that means she. She knew I was being attacked. And she came to my rescue. Could that be when I. Which would mean that Kyoko. She killed someone for me. That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. What? Biaki, I should know better than anyone? Does that mean... So 
those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would ne never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But could I really have done that? understand that more than anyone here. Shoot! Be in my own room, correct? He literally took the key away from her. If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Byakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key... I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. No, that's not actually true. There was a clear contradiction in what Kyoko said. An obvious lie. But this... This isn't like her. To try and save herself with such a desperate lie? Does she really feel that threatened because she's the killer? Or is it something else? Was there some deeper meaning hidden in what Kyoko said earlier? If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of the school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I cannot let it happen. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. The Mastermind's trap. The Mastermind's trying to trap Kyoko, but... What if that's not really true? What can I do? What should I do? What should I? The mastermind's trap. The victim was Mukuro. Kyoko killed her. What does Kyoko really know? What am I supposed to do? Kyoko's lie. I'm not the only one who knows it's a lie. I'm the only one who can expose it. But who? Can I trust? What am I supposed to do? The Mastermind's Trap. If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. We know the danger, but if the risk means solving a mystery, we have no choice. Am I wrong? What do I do? I have to decide right here, right now, whether or not to expose Kyoko's lie. I am so half tempted to make this trial of part three, but I'm not going to. Okay. First, is there a way for me to save where I'm at right now? Please. I'm hitting every possible button, and I can't. Obviously, we can either pursue it or let it go. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Um, I hate that I'm doing this. I really do because this goes against my nature and my behavior. Oh. But Kyoko.
Like, there's not a lot of evidence suggesting that Kyoko did it. But she's also been the most hidden throughout this entire case. If I let it go, I'm henceforth letting her go. If I'm letting her go and she committed a murder and I'm letting her go for it, I'm dead. If I pursue the lie, and attack her for it, then we keep on going in circles. I don't commit... I, I, she probably will die, but then who do we have left? Biakia? Which I love Biakia, don't get me wrong. But this becomes Biakia's game at this point. Biakia's game to win. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Because Biakia then would have all the control. Oh my god, I'm really going to do this. Kyogo, for the love of god... I have to believe in Kyoko. There's no way that she would kill someone. And there has to be some secret here. Something that has to do with the mastermind's trap that Kyoko mentioned. Oh my god. Does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room. That it was someone else. Yeah. But who else could it have been? I mean, Byakuya had a room key, right? But Toko could have also framed it. What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone or put the key in Kyoko's room. So someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them. Then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. What? It, it had to be Makoto, right? I don't see any other option. Wait a second. You've got it all wrong. Let's think about it one more time. There's got to be a hidden side to this case. Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Mukuro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead, and then we're thrown into a trial. And Kyoko even said, it's a trap the mastermind set for us. So that's why this has to be... Okay, time's up! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have we... It's because you were late, so we had to push back the start time. So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you. Voting time? We are in no way... What? Chosen as the blackened. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What? You think I'm the killer? Sorry, man. It's all your fault. 
Everyone, you're wrong. You've got it all wrong. I didn't do it. Good job, everyone. Good job. They got it right. No. I know that's not true. None of this makes any sense. The whole trial doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. The same as always, just like all the other class trials, I'm going to end it the same way. It's time for your heart-pounding, positively thrilling punishment. Wait, why do I... Kyoko? I don't expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. Wait, what? After school lesson. Ha ha ha! What's this? What's going on? Hey, what was that? Was that? Ah, uh, yeah, it had to be. Alter ego? Alter ego? That's this is some stupid virus from that stupid guy. He must have been. He must have planted it and invaded my network. Damn it! All hell! I don't believe this. Seems you finally made your miscalculation. Now. No, you miscalculated from the very beginning. What the heck? What was that? What I'm saying is, you shouldn't have underestimated us. Hmm. Huh. What are you talking about like you already won? I barely felt a thing. It's like a pinch. An itch. The stupid virus is gone now. Got it? So is Makoto. Maybe I didn't get a sm Maybe they didn't get a smash him flat, but you'll never see him again to waste any... To waste away in the garbage stewing pit in a way that's better than special punishment. <laughs> but still not enough. I'm still not satisfied. I'm going to bring despair to the rest of you. Bring despair to the entire world. <laughs> Is he gone? Hey, Kyoko, what is the meaning of all this? What the hell's going on? It's okay. We're not the ones being trapped this time. In other words, now it's the mastermind that is ensnared. Wh what, did you say? what are you talking about? So... You'll understand soon enough. Very soon indeed. The massive high school towers over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands in the center of the entire world. Hope Peak Academy. Wait, what? It brings the top students every... What? What? 
Why are we getting a loop of the first chapter? Uh. Well, what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of the hard wooden desk. My body felt heavy. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be weird for me to zonk off in class. What? Whoa. I could finally feel my mind and body start to come together and then I was awake. Or was it just another dream? A dream inside a hopeless nightmare. No, this isn't a dream. I could tell because the stench invading my nostrils was too powerful for this dream. What an awful smell. In a vast, dark cavern, with the barest hint of light seeping in, trash was piled high across all the area. This must be some kind of underground garbage pit. A heck of a situation to find myself in. But that's not... That was just the beginning of my problems. I was going to be struck or stuck in here until I wasted away and died. No, I can't let it happen. Not after my what my not after what my good friend went through to save me. I remembered all too well what had happened. Alter Ego saved me. He used up his last little bit of strength to do it. So I can't give up now for myself and for my friend. And with that my pursuit for survival began. First up, I was going to start looking for a way out of there. Rattle, rattle. It's locked. Rattle, rattle. No matter how many times I pushed it, pulled it, kicked at it, it didn't budge. Getting out of here isn't going to be that easy. Well, I'm not getting out of here anytime soon. I decided to look around for some food. There's plenty of food here, but it's all rotten. That was pointless, too. Next, I searched for some water. How can I be sure liquids, wh which liquids I can drink and which ones are all around a bad idea? Again, pointless. I feel like I'm blocked on all sides. But that's still not enough reason to give up because... Because I am still alive. As long as, long as I'm alive, I will never give up. After making that proud declaration, the next thing I decided to do was... Go to sleep. My sleep was deep and uninterrupted. That was my only way to preserve what little strength I had left. After not being able to eat or drink, I can't be sure, but I think it can le at least last a full day. Th at least a full day had passed. And all I did was sleep and sleep. It was like I was waiting for some kind of sign to fall come falling out of the sky. However, what fell from the sky wasn't a sign. Not exactly. Grunch. What the... The strange sound pierced my silent isolation, jarring me awake. As I watched, the pile of garbage jolted or jostled and formed an odd shape. Did something fall down there? Something fell from up above. What could it have been? Did a giant piece of trash just fall down here? I carefully stretched my hand out towards whatever it was that had trembled down here with me. A giant piece of trash. Rude. Before she emerged from the pile of garbage, I knew who it was. It smells awful. Kyoko? You look like you're doing better than I expected. What, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here to help you. I'm glad to hear that, Kyoko. Um, you got a bit of garbage in your hair. She gave her head a quick, sharp shake to get rid of the trash and then face me again. Okay. First, I have something for you. Some food and water. Thank you. Go ahead and eat it. We can talk once you're finished. Thank you. I snatched the bread and the water she was holding out for me. Within seconds, my mouth was making its way toward her. My mouth was and making it was in my mouth, making its way towards my stomach. Phew. That really hit the spot. Now I've got all the energy I need to keep going. So you still haven't given up then? Of course not. After all, the fact that I can keep going forward is about all I'm good at. Well, I'm not... Well, that's not such a bad thing to be good at. 
But Kyoko, why did you come down and rescue me? To pay a debt, or no, to atone. Atone? During the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. So you knew that I knew. But even though I knew, I did nothing to help you. I abandoned you. Don't say that. You didn't abandon me. No, that's exactly what I did. I abandoned you in order to save my own life. You were trying to save me, and I couldn't bring myself to do the same for you. But listen, not that I'm trying to make excuses, but there was a reason I ha there was a reason that I had to survive no matter the cost. Why did you have to survive? I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. The reason I have to survive is so that I can do what I came to this school to do. What? I made it up my mind to come to Hope Peak Academy for one very important reason. So you have a reason for coming to Hope Peak. Indeed. That's right. At least I did. Once. Once. Hi. Until recently, I had forgotten what it was. You forgot, but that's... I had no memory of what my purpose was. No memory? That's impossible! Amnesia. Then, it really is true. You lost your memory. Do you, re do you remember, Makoto? Do you remember the first thing that happened to each of us when we arrived at the school? The first thing. You're talking about when we fainted, right? I fainted, and when I woke up, I was trapped here. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school, and I couldn't remember why what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it, it happened by chance. It just seems much too convenient. Are you saying that you think you lost your memory because... I don't think. I'm positive it was the work of the mastermind that they stole my memory. But why would why, why would they want to do that? There's only one reason I came up with. It's because my purpose, my ability, somehow would interfere with the mastermind's plans. So the mastermind just stole them from you? However, and it could also mean somehow my memories may be connected to the mystery of this school and the mastermind, which is why I have to get them back. That's why I've been investigating things by myself this whole time. If you can, s But if what you say is true, why didn't you ask the rest of us to help you? If I did that, and we all worked as one, the mastermind would have noticed right away. Plus, there's always a chance that the mastermind is actually one of us. What? Well, don't make too big a deal of it. It's just a possibility. But since it is a possibility, we cannot ignore it, right? The mastermind, one of us, if she believes that, then of course she couldn't trust anyone around her. In which case, it only makes sense that she would look into the missing memory herself. However, that being said, there was a limit to what I could do by myself, which is why I asked you to help me. But why me? Because among everyone, you were least likely to be the mastermind. That was just an intuition, but I, I see your intuition was right, though. There is in no way an ordinary kid like me could have been the mastermind. I understand. I should understand everything. My reason to be out of here. It's to stay here. Ugh. It's just like the dream I had before, but why did that just happen? Are, are you okay? Oh, yeah, it, it's it's nothing. It is nothing, right? Hey. Even now, I still trust you, you know? It's just, I'm not used to relying on others. I know I've never asked you for help the right way, so I understand if you're not convinced. I Honestly, I was convinced. I think that's just her personality. You said you had a reason for doing all the investigating on your own. How did that turn out? Were you able to remember everything? I think there's still a lot I don't remember, but at the very least, I was finally able to recall my purpose and my ability. You mentioned your ability. My ability, what everyone should have been known for. I am the ultimate detective. The ultimate detective? And the reason I came to Hope Peaks Academy... 
was there was someone I had to find here in the school. You had to find someone? Who? Well, it was the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. The headmaster? Why did you want to find the headmaster? Because he's my father. What? I was separated from him as a child. As it turns out, he became the headmaster of Hope Peak. Kiyoko's dad is Hope Peak's headmaster? Then that explains when Alter Ego told us that he thought the headmaster was involved. I... I'll find a way. I... No matter what it takes, I will find the headmaster. No matter the cost. Oh, Kyoko, what's going on? I... My memory hadn't come back at that point. But when he said that, or when he said that, I, I felt strange. It makes perfect sense now. Of course, since my whole purpose for coming here was to find him, that makes sense. Listen, Makoto, I want to make this perfectly clear so there's no misunderstanding. I said the headmaster wasn't the mastermind, but I didn't say that I want that to protect him. I only said that because I felt, based on what I had seen when I had snuck in the headmaster's room. Then what did you see there? The room had been ransacked. The shelves were a mess, and the desk drawers were dumped on the floor. But the only conclusion is that someone who didn't know where anything was had been in there. You mean the mastermind, right? That's true. That was my assumption, yes, and I had to confirm my suspicion. I decided to investigate the second floor of the dorms using the key that I had found. But why there? Because I also found this in the headmaster's room. This is some kind of map. Indeed. A layout of the entirety of Hope Peak Academy. I found it in the headmaster's room, along with Mukuro's profile and the key. The map showed the second floor was home to a number of rooms meant for facility use. Some of the staff must have been had to stay overnight from time to time, and I figured the headmaster would have some kind of private room there, and I assumed that if that was true, then the room would likely hold more clues, so I went to check. And that's when I finally remembered. I remembered that my purpose was to find the owner of the room. So you went there to see if the headmaster really did have a private room there. But once I got there, I noticed that the so second floor dorms, so what was it like? That part of the school, I mean. It's hard to describe, but all I can say is, the moment I saw it, I realized, whatever's going on in the school is more horrific than we ever imagined. W what do you mean? I can't explain it. You need to see it for yourself, and I'm sure you'll get the chance soon enough. Sounds like it must be important, and really ominous. Of course, once I got to the door, there was no cameras and no monitors, which is why I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the building. It had to do with Mukuro Ikasava, doesn't it? It's just, just to be perfectly kill, clear, I didn't kill her, and I know it wasn't you either. I know you're right, but that just means everyone but you and me had an alibi, so then who did kill her? What I can be sure is, the mastermind is directly involved. To begin with, the point of the class trial of Mukura Igisaba was to get me killed. Get you killed? Indeed. I stole the key and disappeared, and in retaliation they wanted to drop me out and eliminate me. Correct. And the point of the class trial, it was. The mastermind knew they couldn't interfere directly. You mean because of the school regulations? Right. Exactly. Minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Peak Academy at your discretion. The mastermind is adamant about following the rules, and with that rule in place, they couldn't step in. Since they couldn't kill me themselves, they tried to use the class trial to do it. The mastermind couldn't step in because of the rules. It makes sense. It's, it sounds like the mastermind themselves is somehow bound by the school regulations. The other thing I'd like to point out is that the murder of Mukuro Ikasaba. What that? What's that? There was a point where Mukuro may not have become the victim. It could have been you, Makoto. I could have been the victim? Indeed. You know what I'm talking about, right? What do you mean? Do you mean... During the night? I, I can hear them, you know. The footsteps of the god of... Footsteps of the god of death. What? I can hear the god of death as he moves. 
The ability naturally draws me into cases just like this, which is exactly what happened with you. Well, I was in the dorms, and I suddenly, I had a sudden sense of dread and looked down the stairwell and saw a white shadow across the corridor. I gave, the ch I gave chase uh, right away. As I followed it, I saw the shadow go into your room. I ran into your room and I saw what was happening. I intervened immediately, of course. However, that wasn't at the end of things, of course. I stopped them, but it led to... Whoever the masked assailant was, they ended up dead. Correct. And their murder was disguised. And the dojo key wound up in my room. It all was, has to be the work of the mastermind. In an attempt to use the class trial to eliminate me. So all of this would mean whoever killed, or so all of this m would mean whoever killed M Mukuro is the mastermind, right? I don't have anything conclusive, but that's what I think. But if that's really true, it means the mastermind can kill whoever they want if, when they feel like it. Wait, but doesn't that create another contradiction? The mastermind wanted to use the class trial to kill you because they couldn't interfere, right? You're right. That is a contradiction. And it's not just Mukuro. They needed a class trial to kill me, but it seems that they but seemed ready to kill you in your room. Everything they did is a contradiction. So what does that mean? It means that the mastermind is the one who's been con cornered, huh? Just a little more. A little more and I should be able to figure out what the mastermind's the mastermind's identity, the identity of the other ultimate despair. The other ultimate despair. There's no doubt. There, there's no doubt that Mukuro was the ultimate despair, and that she's dead. But I don't think the ultimate despair is just one person. It's not. Indeed. If you think about it, the ultimate despair seems to be implicate whoever caused that event. You're talking about what happened a year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. Whoever's responsible for that. They're the ultimate despair. That despicable group whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. Then there, make no mistake. They're the root of all the evil that has been forced onto us to go or that has forced us to go through this. That is the ultimate despair. And that is our real enemy. To be continued. You received the Dream Island Rocket. Save Chapter 5 ending. And we will be continuing this in the next episode. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I don't know what's coming up and what we're going to have to do. But what I do know is... At this point, I'm kind of glad I get went against the grain of the John arc of things to do. I still am in shock that I drove myself to protect Kyoko. Because normally, I am not a fan of lying and doing all that stuff. But, I don't know. I just, I had the... I love, I love Kyoko so much that I couldn't drive myself to be the person that actually killed her. Obviously, if I contradicted her lie, Biakia would have been like, and then it would have been Biakia's game. I couldn't have that happen. To pr I had to protect my game. It's Survivor. The best way to protect my game was to protect Kyoko. We'll see what that leads to in the future. Bye!